is apparently spraying more than one field because of his pattern. As a plant pathologist, my emphasis the last 55 years has been on control of soil-borne plant pathogens, microbial ecology, and biological control. Far farming is really managing an ecology. That e ecology consists of of the plant, it consists of the physical environment, consists of the biological environment. It's the biology in the soil that makes the nutrients that are in the base construction of the soil available for the plant. The plant takes it up, it's used for its growth, and that's where we get our minerals so that if it's not available in the soil, it won't be in the plant and then we become deficient in calcium and magnesium and manganese, zinc and copper and all of the other nutrients that the plant would normally provide. That's one of the things that the genetic engineering process uh, reduces. It reduces the ability of the plant to take up manganese, to take up magnesium, so that when we eat that plant or when we feed it to our animals, our animals are malnourished. They don't have the uh, essential minerals that they need for their proper growth or for their proper disease resistance. In the Roundup Ready plant, we find not only the product that makes that plant tolerant to glyphosate, but we find over 60 other proteins are also being produced. Many of those proteins we have never seen in science before. They're not in the databases because they're not natural uh, proteins that can be chronically toxic or even as we found with the L-tryptophan, lethal on a very short term. Your cows come like that when you call them? Come on. This is part of our cow herd. We raise all of our livestock without antibiotics, without steroids or growth hormones. We have a continually growing market for that type of meat. People realize that it, it tastes better and it's healthier for them. We do not and will not use GMOs in any way, shape, or form, and our livestock don't want GMOs. The animals, I believe, are smarter than the scientists that are developing the GMOs. I've had the amazing privilege of helping a lot of livestock producers solve problems that were being caused by GMOs. The best solution is always to switch back to non-GMO. One particular operation, a father, five sons, and a son-in-law. They asked me what I thought about switching back to non-GMO. I told them in quite detail what they may see happen. I didn't know it, but they took my word. And a year later, they called me back after they had switched to non-GMO corn. Their injectable antibiotic use dropped 80%. The animals were growing faster, they were eating more, and they had improved feed conversion. Sure, my pen quit working.
Okay. Now, imagine I have AstraZeneca, Syngenta, Bayer, Pfizer Pharmacy up, up John of Monsanto, written in the center of the circle. They're in the chemical business. We're using poison to raise crops. What do we raise crops for? Cereal and grain. What do we feed the bulk of the grain to? Livestock. If we're in, in using these poisons on the crop, if there were to be an adverse effect, do you think it would be, or a residual effect, do you think it would be good or bad? Most people say bad. So if there's an adverse effect of using the poison on the crop, is there a chance it's in the grain? If it's in the grain, you feed the grain to the livestock. If the livestock don't feel good, who do you call? The veterinary. When the veterinary comes, what does he recommend you give them? Drugs to make them feel better. What if you want them to grow faster? What do we give them? Hormones to make them grow faster. What do we raise livestock for? Meat. Who eats the meat? The people. If there's a negative residual effect of having the poison in the grain that affects the livestock, could it be in the meat? If it's in the meat and the people eat the meat and they don't feel good, where do they go? To the doctor. After you go to the doctor, what might he give you a piece of paper with his autograph on and where will he send you before you go home? The pharmacy. AstraZeneca, Syngenta, Bayer, Pfizer Pharmacia, Up, John of Monsanto are all in the pharmaceutical and chemical business. Does this present a positive cash flow for the companies in the center of the circle? You asked, why does our government allow this? Those scoundrels are running the different regulatory departments of our government. That's an easy question to answer. It's all about greed, money, power, and control by the handfuls of a few.